Mr. Wilkie, um, can I get a hand with something? Sure, man. I'm just having a look at this problem here. I'm trying to think of a number that when tripled, then added to four, then halved, equals five. I just have no idea where to start. Could it be anything? Well, it's a bit weird that you're thinking about stuff like this. However, it just so happens in maths, we've got a little bit of a tool, a little bit of a weapon that actually helps us to solve things like this. What's that? Algebra. Now, algebra is an incredibly supportive tool when we're trying to do problems like this. But really to understand algebra, we probably need to take it back a little bit. Algebra is in fact when we replace numbers that we don't know the value of with a letter. And if we put that, we can derive an equation and we can actually solve that to figure out exactly what that number is going to be. Okay, so my number could be x. Absolutely. Or it could even be a. Up to you. Alright, so going back really to the beginning of algebra, to really understand the power that algebra holds for us, we're going to go right back to one-step equations. Now, imagine I'm thinking of a number that when I add 3, the answer is 7. So okay. I can write that yep. like this. I'm thinking of a number that when I add 3, the answer is 7. Now, being pretty good at maths, I think you probably already know the answer to that. It has to be 4, right? Nice work. So what I'm going to do is just keep one little line there, and I'm going to go down here, and we know naturally that the value of A actually equals 4 exactly as you said. Algebra-wise, congratulations, you can now do algebra one-step equations, and you've solved that equation. But in maths, we like to see a little bit more working out, and this is the working out that has to go with it. It's A plus 3 at the moment. We don't want that plus 3 there. We want to take that 3 away. To get rid of a plus 3, we're going to have to minus 3 from one side. Whatever we do to one side, we also do to the other. So if I minus 3 from that side, I get left with A, but over here, that must be 7 minus 3, and as you already knew, 7 minus 3 equaled 4. Easy as that. Makes a lot of sense. It does. Should we try one more? Let's do it. Okay. I'm thinking of a number that when I subtract 6, the answer is 11. Okay. What do you think? So, you're thinking of a number. Yep. When you subtract 6, it equals 11. So, before it was plus 3 and we had to minus 3, so this time I'm going to try plusing the 6. So, 11 plus 6. B must be 17. It works. Absolutely fantastic. And I'm thinking probably even before you did that step, you already knew in your head that 17 minus 6 equaled 11. So you knew that answer. I'm happy for people just to jump straight to there because they show us the understanding. But really, to get full marks, we need to come back and show some of that working out there. Exactly. What do you think about one-step equations? I think I've got my head around them. Nice work. The power of algebra actually extends beyond just adding and subtracting. We can also do multiply and divide as well. So an example would be, if I'm thinking of a number that when I multiply by 4, the answer is 20. What do you think that number is? So 4 times what gives me 20? Well, it's got to be 5. It does. So straight away again, congratulations, you can already do one-step equations in algebra. What we do like, though, is to show some working out. Now, remember, when a 4 and a C are side by side, that's a tiny little multiply in there, and we look for the opposite of multiply. We're trying to get rid of that multiply by 4. The opposite of multiply is divide. So if I divide that side by 4, 4 divided by 4 is 1, which just leaves 1 C. But again, whatever I do to one side, I've got to do to the other. So over this side, it becomes 20 divided by 4. It'll give me that beautiful answer of 5 that you already knew. Fantastic. I think you should have another go. Alright. Alright. Well, what if I had a dividing situation from the start? Sure. So if I had a number and it had to be divided by 3 to equal 3. Sure. So I could look at that straight away and think that has to be 9. So D must equal 9. Congratulations, you've already got it right. But I want to show you my working. Sure do. So in the last one, you did the opposite operation. So if this is d divided by 3, I would have to multiply both sides by 3. That would cancel out the divide by 3 there, leaving just the letter. And on this side, I would show my working. 3 multiplied by 3, which solves my solution of 9. Outstanding. Outstanding. And that is one step algebra. The next stage is two-step equations. Now, you seem like you're handling those one-step equations very, very well. I was pretty impressed by that. 
So now the next stage is our two-step equation. Okay. Now, for these ones, I want you again to think, 2 multiplied by what number plus 1 equals 7? Now, lots of people are able to actually have a go at that in your head. So 2 times what number plus 1 do you think equals 7? It's got to be 3. It has got to equal 3. Can I get you to put 3 equal signs? And then another one down the bottom that says x equals 3. Fantastic. Now, the good thing about that is that you show me you can actually understand algebra and you actually solve two-step equations. Love your answer. Awesome. However, as you've probably got a bit of a hint with those equal signs, we've got to show a little bit more working out to appreciate where that x, one, x equals 3 has come from. To solve these equations, we're going to do the reverse order of operations. So the normal order of operations would be 2 times whatever x is plus the 1. Okay. So to reverse that, we need to get rid of that plus 1 then we need to get rid of the multiplied by 2. Okay. Can you remember how we get rid of that plus 1? We've got to do the opposite operation, which will be minus 1 on both sides of the equal sign. Fantastic. I love how you said it's on both sides. Keeping those equations balanced on both sides is the most important thing we can do. So if we take 1 away from that side, what are you going to be left with? Uh, just the 2x. Perfect. But again, what we do to one side, we've got to do to the other. So 7 minus 1 goes on that other side. Fantastic. Cool. Can I get you to bring that 2x right down to the next line because we haven't touched that, but we can do that 7 minus 1. 6. Fantastic effort. And now you'll notice it's been reduced from a two-step equation down to a one-step equation. I remember how to do this. Fantastic. Go to town. I shouldn't have to help you at all. So it's multiplying by x, so I do the opposite, which is divide by 2. So that will become x. And then over here, I'm going to show my working. 6 divided by 2. Fantastic. <laughs> All right, should we do one more? Let's do it. All right. I'm thinking of a number that when we minus 3 from that number and then divide the answer by 2, the final answer would be equal to 5. So how does that look? I think you've done a very good job of writing that down. So I'm thinking of a number that when we subtract 3, divide the answer by 2, the final answer is 5. I love the way you've set that up. Now, similar to this one, we're going to have three lines of working and then our final answer. Okay. So can you pop it in? Three lines of working there for us, and then that final answer. Do you know, by chance, what number minus 3, that then when you divide by 2 equals 5? This is a fair bit harder than this one. Oh, he does. He's I a smart boy. All right, what do you think it might be? Is it 13? It could be 13. So write down y equals 13 down the bottom. Okay, so we now need to do, again, the reverse order of operations. The order of operations, if we knew what y is, we would minus 3, then we would divide by 2. So reversing those operations, what's the first thing we're going to get rid of? We're going to multiply both sides by 2. Fantastic. Go ahead and do that, please. So the left-hand side here would become y minus 3. And the right-hand side, 5 times 2. Fantastic. We can't do anything to that y minus 3 at this stage, so we drop that straight down. But we can work out 5 times 2. 10. And isn't he good at his 2 times table? So from here, again, we've separated from a two-step equation down to a one-step equation. We've only got one thing to get rid of, and that's that minus 3. How do you get rid of a minus 3? Add it to both sides. Fantastic. Away you go. Sir has suggested 10 plus 3 does, in fact, equal 13. I love his working out. Hey, presto, he can do two-step equations. Yeah.